Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will be creating harmonic progressions in major keys using Roman numeral analysis as a guide to writing. All right, well, what does that mean? Well, let's backtrack a little bit and talk about triads. In the previous lecture, we learned that we could stack thirds or add a third and a fifth above a note to create a chord called a triad. For example, if you start with C, you could add a third above that and another third above that, or a third and a fifth above C, to create what's called a triad. Let's listen to what this sounds like. So we have C, E, and G. We could then check the distances, not just with our ear, but also by physically mapping it out on the piano. For example, on the piano, we saw that a major third, which is the bottom two notes there, is defined by being four keys away, the second note being four keys away from the first. So we had C, and then on the guitar, you could go one, two, three, four frets. Each fret is the equivalent of a key. And we saw that we had E. So we had a major third for the bottom two notes. Then we saw we had from E, E, one, two, three notes away. That's a minor third. So you had a major third and a minor third, or a major third with a fifth on top, a perfect fifth, because that's seven keys away. In talking about the notes, we often found it a lot easier to describe them by their intervals. The root is the first note. That's where we start. Then the third was the note in the middle, or one, two, three, the third note in the scale. Similarly, the fifth note would be the top note. Two, three, four, five. So we're basically referring to the intervals. And that makes sense if you're thinking about scale degrees. Also, it should be noted, a major chord is always going to have this pattern, a major third on the bottom with a minor third on top of it, or also could be thought of as a major third and a fifth. This is the happy chord. Yay. Cool. But let's keep going. We also looked at another triad. For example, if we start on E and then add a third and then another third on top of that, or if we start on E, add a third and then a fifth, we saw E, G, and B. E, G, B. As we saw before, E to G was a minor third, as it's one, two, three keys away. That's where we start, that's the root. First, second, third fret. And that makes sense. We have a half step and a whole step together makes three keys away. Then we saw that G to B is a major third, meaning it's four keys away. Just like C to E was four keys away, there we see G to B, four keys away. So you have G, one, two, three, four frets. Again, a fret on the guitar is a key on the piano. We see a major third on top of a minor third now. And again, that's two whole steps. So again, a minor third plus a major third equals a perfect fifth. So it doesn't matter that the order is reversed. It's still seven keys away. And now we have a formula for a minor chord. A minor chord is when you have a minor third on the bottom with a fifth above or a minor third with a major third on top. Should be noted that this is the sadder sounding chord. Here's E, G, E, an octave lower. Great, but there's still another chord we talked about. And this was based on the unique sounding chord that had 
this B to F, the tritone in C major, the devil's tone. And here we see B to F. This is interesting because B to F is only six keys away, or six frets, right? So here's B, one, two, three, four, five, six, B, F, diminished fifth. And we see it on the piano, it's the same thing. So starting on B and adding thirds, or again, you can add a third and a fifth above B, we get D, B to D is a minor third. And which is three keys away. And then we have another minor third. And that creates the diminished fifth, six keys away. That gives it this B diminished quality. All other chord chords and major keys are either major or minor with perfect fifths, except this one. And it has kind of a spooky quality to it. And last but not least, let's review all the chords we built. So knowing these uh, three qualities of chords in a major key, we could spell out all the chords that could, all the triads that could be built. So first we created the scale with scale degrees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we added thirds. C, E, D, F, E, G, F, A, G, B, A, C, B, D. And they had these patterns. You had major third, minor third, minor third, major third, major third, minor, minor, and you could start over again, major. Then we add thirds above those notes, or similarly, fifths above the roof. So now we see, oops, one, three, five, Diminished chord, set to four, back to the C major chord. Okay, again, that diminished chord occurs only once because of that tritone. After this, we labeled the chords with Roman numerals to show their order and quality. And there we have, I'm going to play this an octave below, one, two, major, major, minor, and then we had diminished, back to major. In capital, that meant it was major. Lowercase, as I was saying, is the minor. And then that diminished is that scale degree. And you can find that in uh, emojis under there. It's uh, letter-like symbols. And we map this out in C. Why do we do all this? This is the cool stuff. We did all this because the Roman numerals, how I said it helped with analysis. Well, what they found were these patterns and the majority of, of harmonic movement or movement between chords in a major key looks like this. Well, what is this? Well, basically, this is a graph from uh, music theory for the 21st century classroom, lesson 9.4. And it's a general pattern for many chord progressions. The tonic or one, that's where we start, is on the left. And then we see that there's all these ways things move. You can move to what's called tonic prolongation. Then you can move on to predominant. And then you can move on to dominant and then tonic. Or you could skip that. One can go to any chord, but then how they go after that seems to fit in these patterns with a couple brief exceptions. But this helps us explain why when we were starting on three, five, and eight, the melodies worked. They were the tonic chord or one in terms of Roman numerals. So let's see what this sounds like. Well, if I'm starting on one, I could go to, if I'm in C, I could go to six, and then I could go to four, and then I could go to five, and I'd be back to one. Or I could just go from one 
to five, back to one. Or I could go one, two, three. And then I could go to six. And then I could go to four. And then I could go to two. And then I could go to that odd little seven diminished to five, back to one. Cool. So that's me just going through it. There are two exceptions here. There's something called a plagal cadence, and that's going from one to four, back to one. And there's also something called deceptive cadence, where you can go instead of from five to one, you could go from five to six. But we will talk about that later. This just gets us started for now. Okay, well, what are some music examples? Let's check this out. Let's go to music theory for the 21st classroom. Okay, so in lesson 9.41, he talks about the harmonic flow chart. And he goes on to use a bunch of words that we haven't really covered yet. But don't worry, that's not really the important part right now. We're just trying to play around with some chords. And this chart is kind of a cool place to start. Ooh, what's this one? Minor key. We'll talk about that later. Let's just focus on the top part, major key. And here are some of the examples. Check this out. This is the most common. It's called tonic dominant tonic. And it just means one, five, back to one. Let's listen. That's Mozart. Got that F sharp. Indeed, yeah. So it's D, 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 D. Now I'm using the guitar to kind of make it sound a little fancier. So if you know how to do that on the guitar, great. But if not, I'm going to show you how to do this in note flight in a little bit. But let's look at some more examples. And you can go and check this out on your own. But Here's a very famous example that we should look at. Hey Jude. Hey Jude. F. Don't make it bad. The C is the five chord. Take a sad song Go back and make to it one. So that's a great example. But there's other progressions. Here's some other ones that are called uh, tonic predominant dominant tonic progressions. And typically this is known as This is the key F. So you have an F chord to four, which is the B flat. Five chord is C back to F. Do C like that. Uh, but there's a lot of other variations. Here's a really cool one. This is one, two, five, one. And this is in the key of C. So it's like one, two, five, one. Let's listen to what that sounds like. This is Bach. Uh, a prelude in C major. Now, there's some things that sound a little different, and it's called inversions. And we're going to talk about that later, but I just want you to hear that. that this is the two. And this is the five. Cool. Let's try another progression. Here's a song. This is a one, four, five called I'll Be There For You, which if you ever watched the show Friends, you probably recognize it. So in this case, it was in the key of A, so you had one chord, <laughs> so you have the <laughs> one chord to the four chord, the five. And there it ended on the five and started over. You can also have more complex chord progressions, which are basically uh, under the tonic, tonic prolongation, predominant, dominant progression or as we call them, one, six, four, five. 
such as if you're in the key of C, it's one, six, four, five. It's a doo wop. Here's a great example Heart and Soul. Heart and Soul, I've been in love with you. Heart and Soul, the way a fool would do. kind of fun. You've probably heard it a million times, but maybe you didn't know what it was. A lot of songs here. You can check them all out. Strolling down. Scrolling down, I should say. <laughs> and here's one more. You can switch that progression around so it has a different vibe. You can start on the four and then go to the five, one, and then six. And it has a different vibe. Check this out. This is Rude. <laughs> So you had D flat, and so you had D. So there are a lot of different things we can play with. But before we go any further, I want to make this a lot easier because you're going to be writing out a lot of chords like you did before. And if you have to do this in different keys, you're going to get kind of frustrated. So we're going to use key signatures. What is that? Well, so far, we've been writing out all the accidentals or cells. This is a great educational practice. But there's an easier way, and it's called key signatures, and it's a shorthand for all those sharps and flats that you had to remember. Key signatures indicate the accidentals used in that key, so you don't have to write them all the time. There are a total of 15 major key signatures, seven with sharps, seven with flats, and one without either. And it looks like this. Let me get myself out of the way. So we see here, there's the zero, then you have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sharps. So that's seven different key signatures every time you had a sharp. And then if you go the other way to the left of the circle, no flats, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven flats. And some of these overlap where you have six sharps and six flats. These overlapping keys are called and harmonic equivalents. We won't worry about it too much right now, but I just wanted to throw that out there, that if you went to the piano and played C sharp major, it'd be the same notes on the piano as D flat. At any rate, these keys are organized by fifths, perfect fifths at that, as that is the common key change often used in music. And here we see, if you have C major, well, if you went up to a perfect fifth, that would be G. Now, if you didn't change any of the notes, you'd get this. It sounds kind of funny. So what you have to do is add an accidental so that instead of F natural, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, you get F sharp, and then it sounds like a major key. This is because it will create the second whole whole half tetrachord. That's the D, E, F sharp, G. From D, you have whole. From E to F sharp is another whole. And then F sharp to G is the half step we needed. And then this just keeps going around. If you started on D in a G major scale, you would have same problem you have to add that C sharp. So here's a trick to remember this. The sharp that's there on the very right is the leading tone to the key you're in. So you see F sharp, well, that's the leading tone to G. If you think, oh, what's a half step away, or one key away, oh, G. Make sense? So then you just keep going around. A has three sharps, and it's F sharp, C sharp, and now we had to add a G sharp to get to A. And then E needed 
It had F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp to get to E. If we didn't add that D sharp, we'd have. Now it sounds right. Kind of making sense? Well, if we go the other way, what happens here is that the accidental added is correcting the fourth. So let's say you wanted to start an F. Okay, you just don't have any accidental. You get this. The Sim, the Sim, Sims. That's uh, what's called Lydian, and it's a little different than major. I just kind of threw out a word, but don't worry about it. It's just not a major scale. What we need is do, re, mi, fa to get the hole. There's the hole. Uh, there's the next hole. The half, we have to flatten the fourth. So you get one flat at the fourth scale degree of the new key, which this in this case is actually flatting the sevenths from the pre previous key. Because if you had C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, you would have to turn that B, B flat. Anyway, hopefully this is kind of making sense. So to go from C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, you have to flatten the leading tone so that it becomes the correct fourth scale degree in the next one. F, A, F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F. And that keeps going around. If you tried to play the key of F, it's starting on B flat. problem. You have the leading zone getting in the way of a fourth that makes the tetrachord of the first uh, of a the first tetrachord of a major key. So you get ah E flat that makes sense. So you start here whole step whole step half and then you have the next tetrachord F G A B makes sense. So another way to think about it is that the flat just before the last one is the key you're in, with the exception of F, because there's no F flat. Make sense? Kind of? And again, this has to do with the circle fifths and how it works. There's another way to remember this, too. Uh, there's two mnemonic devices. The order of sharps, if you're going to write, is F, C, G, D, A, E, B, or fast cars go dangerously around every bend. That's how you remember to add the sharps. The order of flats, meanwhile, is B, E, A, D, G, C, F, or B, the greatest common factor. B, E, A, D, G, C, F. That's how you add them. And we can see that here. B, E, A, D, G, C, F. Or another way is to think about this. Father Charles goes down and ends battle for the sharps. That's going to the right of the circle. Or reverse, battle ends and down goes Charles' father. Either way, I would just use the chart. <laughs> Find your starting note, make a scale on your own, and then see if you've got the right amount of sharps or flats. So let's do this. Let's make three chord progressions in three different keys by doing the following. First, we'll create a chord chart from a major, a major scale, making sure to create a major scale, labeling the scale degrees, using note names, with sharps or flats without the key signature. I want you to do it from scratch first. Then make cor the corresponding triads with Norman, no Roman numerals in the lyrics using a key signature, right? So remember, Roman numerals, one is major, two and three is uh, the lower case to show that's minor, etc. Then we can use that chart to help us make three different chord progressions, making sure that we cover chord progressions that uh, last an entire measure. And so you can pick whatever time signature you want, but you, I want you to play only one chord and it holds out for the entire measure. I'm just gonna do four four for now. I also want you to end on one for two of the progressions you would write. I also want you to start on one for two of the progressions you write. And then one progression must use only major chords. And then another one must use both major and minor chords. So you can kind of, do whatever you want for the third. And each progression must be a minimum of four chords or four measures. And you can repeat a chord though, just so you know. It could be longer as well. All right, let's do this. 
So here I am in note flight. I'm starting out in F. That sounds major. Let's add the text. So in the lyrics, I have one. Great. Now, I see there's only one flat. So I'm going to go here, select the measures that follow, and write, and see those little key signature? I need F. Okay, now my life just got a lot easier. Now I'm going to stack the triads. Well, that's the first one. And it's just adding notes. So that's F, I'm going to start on G. Ah, okay, great. So I've got one, two, three, da da da. Let's turn that to quarter notes. Let's listen. Cool, I've got three chords. Let's keep going. E flat. One of the most annoying things for me. One of the things you can do is copy, select all the notes, and move them up. Ah, now it's getting faster. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to copy, paste, and move them up. Select all the notes and move them up. So I'm now on the five. Do this again. Move them up so I, I'm on the six. Move them up so I'm on the seven, which is E. This will be the diminished chord. And then Last but not least, move them up just to have the eight. And now I can label them. Well, let's just make sure. Great. And in the text, let's add in the lyrics. We have one, one, two, three, Four is capitalized. Five, six, ah, that's seven. Some of you wonder, how do I do that seven? Come up here again. Two, oh, there, okay. Wait. Come to edit, emojis, symbols. This is letter-like symbols, Bing. text, lyrics. Letter-like symbols, there's a couple just to make sure, and then back to one. Here you don't use eight, it's just one through seven only. So you didn't even really need to do that, but I just did. Okay, now let's use that chart. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna do something simple. We're gonna go one to five, five back to one. Why not? So one would be F, you can grab this, you can do it individually. That becomes a whole note. And then just to save time, I'm going to copy it, come over here, move that up to five. And then I'm going to copy that over here because it's another five. And then I'm going to come back to one. Those are four different chords because they're in different measures, right? But don't just use one the whole time. You gotta go somewhere. But technically you're going one, five, five, one.
Cool. Now you label it. And so your progression is one, five, five, one. Fun, right? Okay. Want to do another one? So this should be in a different key, but I'm trying to save time so you can watch this. Instead, let's change this so that we're looking at going to a predominant, either four or two. I want to do a minor chord now, right? Because that's one of the things I need to do. So I'm going to switch that first five to a two. And you know what? Just to show you, I can do it pretty quick. I'm going to put this back to C major because I don't know what I'm going to do yet. But I think I'm going to do D major. That does not sound major because I've got D to E, but E to F is only half step away. So that needs to be, uh -huh. that is, needs to be another tetrachord. Great. I have D major now. Let's get the text. Cool. So key of D, I'm going to go to here, change this. Ah, there it says D. Great. Well, that's, that's easy. Now let's make some chords. Okay. So the next thing I have to do is to create, now that I've got picked out the key signature, now I have to create the chords. So I'm going to use that chord I had from before. Uh, and it's now in D. I'm going to make that. There's one. And let's just copy this. And we can go, there's two. I'll copy that. And there's three, because I'm starting on the three. Here, let's move it up to one, two, three, four, starting on the four. Let's move up to one, two, three, four, five, starting on the five. Move that up to six. That'll be starting on B. And move it up to seven. I don't need to do it on eight. I get the idea. Okay, let's see what it sounds like. There's that diminished triad. Cool. Got it. So let's put the lyrics in for that. We have one, two, two, three, four, five, six, and then I am dyslexic, six, and then seven, diminish. That means we need to come up here to Chrome go to our emojis and symbols and get that. Make sense? So there we have. Cool. Now in that previous one, I had one, five, five, one. And I was saying, but hey, why don't I change that five to a two? And that makes sense. I, I'm changing the dominant to a predominant or just picking a different chord before it, right? Because it's just that progression. So I'm going to go turn that to whole note, select that, copy it, do this again. And I sing this. You have to select the whole measure to move it. Otherwise, it's going to do each one. Not the end of the world, but kind of a pain. So that's one, two, five, and then we have one. Let's listen to that. Cool, but what if I wanted it on five? Well, what if I went to one, six and then went to two and then went to five. Why not? Right? I can end on a five. 
So there's one. Let's change this now. So that, as I was saying, this would be the two chord. And this will be the six chord. JP, you know how to do this. <laughs> there's one, six, two. And then I was saying, let's make this the five. I didn't label it. Oops, sorry. That's kind of cool. Well, let's label it now, right? So we know what the progression is again. So before, just to reiterate, I had one, two, five, one. But now I'm ending on five. So I'm starting on one. Then I went to six. Keep trying to write four. Four would be major uh, and capitalize. Uh, there's the two and there's five. Kind of fun, right? Well, let's listen to it again. Cool. So five, according to this chart, always goes back to one. But I want to let you in on a secret. It doesn't always have to. What if it went to six? And we'll explain why this later it works later. But one and six are very related chords. And so what if I snuck in to keep this a little darker? Let's add four more measures. What if I took that six chord again and went back? And then went back to this thing. And I had six, went to four, five, and the one. Because I could do that, right? I could go from six, then that would take me over to this category. I could take four, then there's five, and then one. Let's try it. Uh, I'll move that down. So it's, whoops. I just saw it wrong. Five, and I was going to do one. I know, I know, I know. This, I said, was going to be four. And it is four as a chord, but I need to change that. Let's double check. Okay, I've got one. That's what I said I want to do. There's six. I talked about, yeah, that's six. There's two. Yep, that's two chord. Yep, and here's the five chord. Here's the six chord again. There's the four chord. And here's the one. What does this give me? You know, I did all that work and I kind of liked, I think I kind of like this better if it's actually a one chord. So why don't I copy just this one instead? I don't sleep much lately. Newborns, they do that to you. All right, let's see what this does. So the five now is going back to one. Either way, right? This is going to be a basis for writing new melodies. I hope this helps. I hope you have fun. And I look forward to seeing what you do. Till then.